How's it going, everybody? And today I want I want to do like a like a videos, just me talking about things that I like that are not so serious because most of my videos are like mostly deal with philosophy, science, theology, to a lesser extent, the his the history, politics, stuff like that. So I want to make couple videos, things that are not considered a heavy topic, it's entertainment, video games, music, movies. You name it. and basically it's just me writing there's no script it's just me with a microphone alone in the dark god i'm lonely este, and i also have a blog so i can write stuff that i don't really have an idea for a video because i don't have much to work with or i'm too lazy to do a video so i just write shit down and post it, <laughs> post it on my blog which is radical Borique, este, you can look at that i will put a link in the description Today, I want to talk about things and just me ranting. Uh, first of all, if the, like the title suggests, I want to talk about movie because apparently it's been announced if the, the volume 10 of Ruby is going to be the final volume, which doesn't make any fucking sense to me because how do I say this about Ruby? Ruby, I have a love hate relationship with the show. Because the fr by you know Monty, the creator of Ruby, the first three volumes, which he is the one he made before he sadly passed away from a you know if they from a, op a operation and a allergic reaction, as the and volume four beyond, they just make a shit up as they go along pretty much. But basically, throughout the story, is uh, they I love and hate it. I love the character designs. For the most part, you know, I love the ideas, the concept, and the story as well. Despite the, it's basically a neutral setting where nobody's really safe. Actually, this, despite the lighthearted nature of the characters in the area around them. But here's the problem: if Volume Ten is going to be the last volume, there's still so many unanswered questions that has that needs to be answered. You are not talking about nitpicks, you know, like small things. They are, yeah, it would be cool for a hardcore fan. No, these are like part of the main plot, part of the main story, and you need to answer that shit. It's like watching One Piece, and the show, and, and when One Piece ends, you still don't know who, what the One Piece is. Like, that's bullshit. The whole point is to look for the One Piece. So that's the same thing with Ruby. There are so many things that need to be answered. If they, I think the biggest one. If they gonna, you, we know, I know in advance that Salem, the main villain of the whole setting, the whole show, it's gonna be some Deus Ex Machina bullshit way to defeat her. If you watch the show like I had, the whole all nine volumes plus the spin offs and you know, shit like that, that some of them are canon, some of them are not. If they, by their own admission, she cannot be defeated, she cannot be killed. She is an immortal being that cannot be stopped. If that's the case, you just, as a writer, you just put yourself in a corner. Now you have to find some bullshit that your sex machina excuse to defeat her. Unless you do a shocking ending where the villain actually wins at the end. That would be surprising if they actually do that, if they had the balls to do that. But you know they're not going to do that. But the main problem is the writing, especially after volume 3. Because they introduced so many fucking characters early on in the first two volumes that we never really had time for Ruby. The, you know, the show Ruby, our main character is called Ruby Rose. She doesn't have a character development until volume 9. And even then, she wasn't even the focus. It was John. He got character development twice. Like he's technically the main character of the show, not Ruby, John. Like Blake had a character development, uh, John, if they not, uh, Yang had a character development, uh, Whis had a character development, if the Crow got character development, if the uh, fuck yeah, I forgot the name of the other one, uh, Winter had character development. Pretty much everybody except the who is supposed to be the main character, the face of the show, Ruby herself until Volume Nine. And even then, it was rough as hell. It didn't make any sense either way. If you don't know, spoiler alert, 
in the volume 9 is revealed that she was suffering from depression from her adventures and she, and she committed suicide at the end of the story. Don't worry, she came back from the dead. If the, but like I said, it didn't make any sense. There was no hint of her having suicidal tendencies or depression. That was just out of nowhere, boom, there you go. And then we fixed the issue immediately after it was introduced. Doesn't make any sense. The same thing with relationships in Ruby, which doesn't make any sense. You know, that's another bullshit thing they have to deal with. Romance. Apparently, they're not really that good at it. Despite the LGBT representation in the show, they don't know how to write LGBT characters, apparently. Because if you watch the show, the first three volumes, Blake, you know, the show was clearly writing into the retro she's gonna end up with son. You know, the monkey boy, basically. But because they want to please the fans shipping community of saying uh, Blake, uh, of Blake and Yang, so they dish the plot, you know, break up for no reason so they can so they can put those two together just to please the fans. Even though from a narrative point of view it didn't make any sense, there was no hint of romance between the two until like volume six out of nowhere, pretty much. And like I said, they don't know how to write an LGBT character. Yang is considered pansexual, even though there's no hint of that. It's only from the word of the creators themselves that says she only got interest in, you only see her interest in guys in the first volume, that's it. And after the sh made up ship and they did up the spot, that's where she's interested only in women. Right? But she's pansexual, so she likes everybody. So she, she really will not, if they, if they, how to say, discriminate. Blake, well, now we know she's bisexual because she used to play Adam, who's an abusive boyfriend asshole, and the ass beating and death he got was settled by yourself. I will admit that much. As the Whis, it turns out about her now, she's a belt chaser. She likes men in their 30s and 40s, maybe 50s. So she liked that. And now we know how yeah, John is going to look like in, when he's in middle ages. You know, if again, if you watch the show, it takes place in an Alice in Wonderland type of setting. John got older, right? And when now we it's like, oh, this, this is like a life. You know, so the original idea of John having a crush on Whis during the first two volumes before he fell off with Kira, now we may actually go back with that plot the better. They may add up even better this time. Probably. I don't know. Ruby herself, I don't know. I like for me, my head cannon, she is asexual. She's she's only gay for guns. <laughs> you know, she's only gay for weapons, not people. Uh, that's uh, that's how I see. I prefer if there will be herself being asexual. Not gonna lie. The same thing goes with parentage of Ruby. Who the fuck is Summer? Her mom. We know she died. How she died, we still don't know. What's her relationship with Salem? We don't know. What the fuck is the Silver Eyes had to do with anything? We still don't know about that shit as well. So so many unanswered questions for body time, which again is the final value, apparently. So there's so many unanswered questions. What happened to Ruby Swan? Is Crow actually Ruby's biological dad? That is her favorite fan theory. And like I said, there's a lot of small hints of Crow's relationship with Summer. They never should have said it, but it's like those small details that it's like there's something more going on. Like that he had a crush on Summer. Do they actually have a child that be, that would later be Ruby? Or like what the what exactly is going on with here? It's like it probably they're never gonna answer that question. Another thing would be what the fuck is the final name? You know we have a summer, winter, fall, and spring, right? We know as the out of we already have three of the four maidens, so there's one maiden was missing. So they have to introduce that part for the final body. There's another red like this missing. There's a entire country and the entire map still have been explored, and that's in only the fucking island that looks like a fucking dragon, which sh I will not be surprised. That's where Satan lives, right? Like, there's so many fucking shit that it had need to be worked on. Right? If the, now, Winter has to be more important to probably because she's the Winter Maiden. Haha. -ha. Her name's Winter, Winter Maiden, I get it. If the, so, yeah, if the, she had to be more in the plot now because she has to at this point. The same thing goes with other fucking things like the, the Silver Eyes of Ruby. What the fuck does that mean? That for some reason doesn't bother to explore that for the 90% of the story. The same thing goes with the lore and world building. That's another head scratcher, right? There are many religions in Ruby, apparently, right? 
Some of them are monotheists, some of them are polytheists, judging by the language they use. Wu, Wei, and Yang, apparently they were raised monotheists because they say, oh my god. While well, some characters said, by the gods, would imply there are polytheistic religions. Right? But, as we know, now we know later in the series, the actual gods are true gods who are brothers. Right? And the assistance of maidens debunks every religion that doesn't worship the true brothers. And apparently, with this revelation, it's kept secret for everybody. So only the main characters like Ruby, Yang, Whis, Blake, Crow, Raven, Ospin, and anybody in Ospin's inner circle knows the truth. Because Ospin was fucking there. That's another fucking thing. And now we know the afterlife looks like it's basically Alice in Wonderland setting, right? It's the Salem. Okay, she is the villain and she embraced her villainy, but now we know her backstory. She's not, that's not actually her fault. She's a victim. The gods are the assholes in this situation. Yeah, they, pre they, they, uh, they prefer their own ego over the lives of other people, which led to Salem's villain arc. If you really think about it, Salem is not really the villain, it's the brother gods who created Salem in the first who she is. But in this case, the writer of the show, she just embraced her full on, you know, villainy. She she will not be redeemed at this point. Now, Cinder on the other hand, Cinder Fall, arguably best girl, I I hate that I say that, probably will have a redemption arc. Because her backstory is based of, you know, Cinderella. Yeah, you know, Cinder, Cinderella, and her backstory. She is a victim of abuse. She was an orphan, you know, domestic abuse so from childhood to teenagehood, right? And she hates the rich and the powerful. So, I agree with that part. That's why she hates Atlas. But the problem is that backstory who gives us a compelling villain, right? Who may actually have a redemption arc if they know what the if the writer knows what the fuck they're doing. That she could have been the next hero character, you know. But you know they're not gonna do that. They're gonna push it away that she's gonna be evil 100%, despite what everything's been revealed about her. Even though the backstory was rushed, half-assed, and didn't make sense for the other character because they don't know nothing except herself. That's another thing. And then we take information outside the main show, like will be Chiwi, the books, and stuff like that. Some of them are canon, some of them are not. It's been hinted that Ruby, well, not Ruby, at the Cinder. Wants a relationship. Like I, that's a, that's another thing. She wants a relationship. She wants a boyfriend, and later husband. So, for all we know, in the end of the story, if she doesn't get killed or becomes the next major bit of replacing Salem, for all we know, she may actually end up with somebody, whoever that is, and how that's gonna work out. That's beyond me at this point. If the probably if they're gonna make a sequel series like Boruto shit. She may have her own child, and she and that old child either they gotta do the Harry Potter twist where the children of the villain join for is friends with the heroes, or it's gonna be like a you know bullshit like that. I don't know how that's gonna work. Probably, maybe, kind of. Like I said, that my God. the show is a mess after all the dream. That's what I think. That's why even the fan fiction does a better job of fixing many of the problems of the show, which that's another thing that has to be acknowledged. That they, they talk about it, but they never show it in the show itself. Racism against fathers. That's another bullshit thing. How are you going to talk about that and never actually explore that? Like only one scene where it says no fun is not out. And maybe like one or two scenes in the first volume where you see a flashback of Blake as a kid protesting for fun is right, but that's it. Like that doesn't show any hints of actual discrimination, despite the fact that according to Blake, you know, it's a common problem. Like there is a civil rights movement for fairness, but we don't see that. We don't see nothing about that. That's another bullshit. We focus too much of everything except what it's supposed to focus. We focus too much about the fucking, you know, Alice in Wonderland subplots. We focus too much of the romance of characters that are not even important to the plot. We focus character developments of characters who are not even the main character, their second character characters, and John have his own character development twice in a row with de facto unofficially the main character of the story like there's so many bullshit stuff that has to be expressed that ruby needs to fix because like i said i hate to hear the volume 10 of the last volume 
like I said, there's so many online sex questions. Ruby's Paradise. I'll take a Deus Ex Masita for sure for to be safe. You know, Cinder, will she have a redemption art or not? You know, the Silver Eyes, the Missing Maid, the Missing Red, like the other country that has a very explored. There's so many bullshit things that have to deal with. And yet, somehow, someway, that's not gonna happen. What the fuck? Ah! This is why, this is why you, uh, entertainment can be fucking good for a time when you want to be a consistent, a consistent writer at all. If you take entertainment seriously, yes, I do. Like, bro, I'm a, you don't know my personal life, well, I have to say, I'm a hardcore gamer and a xenophile. But I like shows with good ass writing. And writing that is consistent. And this show is not one of them, despite my love for the show. So, that's just me ranting for 16 minutes. And I may rant about something else in the future, so link in the description. Bye.